Hi, I'm Matt from Ready Performance Ag Parts. Today we're going to talk about the Intelligent Ag Wireless Blockage System. This is one of our most important and popular products we offer. We're here in Montana at Fast Ag Shop. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install this blockage system on your seeder. When you first get your system, you're going to want to open up all your boxes and find this tractor kit box. Inside this tractor kit box, you're going to find your instructions, read through it thoroughly, before you begin. What I'm looking at right now is where do the ECUs mount and how do you route the wiring? So when you start with a blockage system, you really wanna start with the ECUs and knowing what, what the serial numbers are. And what I've done is I've organized these in order of the serial numbers from lowest to highest. And we're gonna put that from left to right on the seater in the front and then we're gonna go back in the back rank and do left to right there as well. And that's going to make setup a lot easier and you'll see that here in a little bit. In the box, you're going to see the mounts and the hardware, an ECU, and some brackets. Well, a helpful tip, assemble these brackets first to the ECUs. It goes like this on the tower here. It reduces the movement and helps you install them much faster and it's much more enjoyable. Much easier. The goal is to have these sensors about the same distance from the head all the way around as much as possible. If you can't, that's okay, but it's still worth trying, it looks better. After you've done that and you've got the sensors cut in the hose and attached to the hose, we're going to then put this rubber hose into the appropriate port. And there's 14 ports. Typically what we do is we have the, port, uh, the runs labeled and we'll do the corresponding run with the corresponding number on the port. Now if you ever have an issue with one of the ports, let's say uh, for some reason it's not reading right or it's giving you a false blockage, you can move it to another port, reconfigure it in your iPad, and it'll function just like it did before, but uh, for the correct run. So that's a good way to test, or if you, let's say your microphone goes bad or something, for some reason years later, um, you can put it into a new port and you're good to go again. So something to keep in mind is you're gonna want this worm gear clamp here on the side of the sensor. You don't want it where these protrusions are in the plastic. So do it just like this. And you're gonna want the in to be on the top side. It's gonna match the flow. In the sensor and out the sensor. Make sure that that is followed and you won't have any issues there. I like to grab all the harnesses and look at the instructions, see where they go, and then stage them on the frame before I start to unroll them and hook anything up. This is gonna be a tow between cart setup. So we're gonna have most of the, or a lot of the harnesses go to the hitch and then also continue along the cart frame. There's an S2, that goes to the cart. S4 and S3 plug into the harness over here. Nice thing is it's also color coded, so you don't actually need to watch too close to the numbers. You just make sure the colors fit and the plug style fits together. Next, we'll install the work switch. The work switch signals to the app when the implement is in or out of the ground. You'll want to install the work switch in a location where it will tilt from one end to the other when the toolbar is changed from a raised position to a lowered position. The work switch uses one of two methods to determine when the implement is in the ground. In the default method, the work switch is engaged when it is tilted towards the wires and the implement is in the ground. It is disengaged when the work switch is tilted away from the wires and the implement is out of the ground. The inverted method reverses the default method, engaging the switch when tilted away from the wires and disengaging when tilted towards the wires. Take note of your work switch method. You'll configure it when setting up your iPad.
The gateway should be mounted on the tractor or on top of the air cart. The specific location will be dependent on your air cart configuration. First, mount the gateway to the mounting bracket. You can mount the gateway in any direction, but the connector should not face up when the bracket is mounted on the air cart or tractor. Secure the gateway to the mounting bracket with the provided screws. On a tow behind air cart, mount the gateway on the toolbar or alternatively mount the gateway on the exterior of the tractor. On a tow between air cart, mount the gateway on the cart catwalk. Make sure the gateway is within reach of the antenna cables. You can secure it to the mounting location using U-bolts. Next is setting up the Wi-Fi antenna. The Wi-Fi antenna sends information from the Recon Blockage Plus system to the iPad. It should be mounted on the rear of the tractor or on top of the air cart. Exact position of your antenna is determined by your cart configuration. First, you will attach the antenna to the mounting bracket. For a tow-behind cart, mount the bracket high on the rear of the tractor cab or on the toolbar using U-bolts. On a tow-between cart, mount the bracket on the air cart catwalk using U-bolts. You'll also want to make sure the mounting location is at least two feet away from the operator and at least eight inches from the gateway to ensure safe operation. Lastly, connect the cellular main and the Wi-Fi BT cables to the gateway. Cap the 433 MHz antenna cable with the SMA terminator jack and zip tie the cable to the other cables. Then cover connectors 5 and 6 with the provided caps. When you get the Intelligent Ag Recon Blockage Plus from Ready, not only are you getting a great system that's going to make sure you're always seating, you also get great benefits. You get an iPad that comes actually configured with the app already installed, location services on, and your settings all on the first page. You don't have all the apps to pick from or have to download your own app just to get started. We also throw in a case because we know the conditions are rugged and we didn't make sure that the iPad can hold up to those conditions. The Recon Blockage Plus system from Ready also comes with an iPad mounting kit. We know every farmer's tractor setup is different, so find the best position that works for you. Make sure to plug in the USB charger into a cigarette lighter socket to keep your iPad charged when you're in the field. To connect to the gateway, make sure you have power. When properly powered, the gateway will light up green. Next, go to the settings on your iPad and click Wi-Fi. Now click on the gateway's network. It should say Gateway, followed by the Gateway serial number. Now you'll want to open the Recon Blockage Plus app. The Gateway will now be configured for Blockage Plus. Close the app and head back into your Wi-Fi settings. Connect to the IAS Blockage Network. Then open the Recon Blockage Plus app and follow the on-screen prompts to start configuring your system. To get started, we will first tap the gear in the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen. Next, we will tap on the Setup Wizard under the Setup and Installation on the bottom right corner of the page. Here, you will select which view you would like to see, Manifold or Row View. The Manifold Viewing option is a top-down look at each manifold or tower on your machine, while as the Row View option is a left-to-right view of the status of each row. For this demonstration, we'll be using the Manifold View. Once we've made our selection, we'll click Next. Now we will select the number of ECUs on the toolbar. In this case, we have eight. The system will now search for the number of ECUs and will automatically move on when the selected number of ECUs are found. If it does not find exactly the number you entered, it will tell you how many it did find and you can choose one of the options. Now it will ask how many products are being monitored. What we're really asking here is if you have more than one type of flow to listen to. If we select one product, that's going to be for single shoot drills where all product flows come out of the same runs. We'll select two products for the dual shoot systems or systems with mid-row banders where the seed and fertilizer come out of separate towers and runs. The next question is how many sections in a single shoot system or the number of manifolds we have in a dual shoot system. In most installations, this number will be the same as the number of ECUs we have. But if you have a system where manifolds are close together and you can use one ECU for two manifolds, this will be slightly different. For this example setup, we have a dual shoot machine with eight manifolds, four manifolds for seed and four for fertilizer. I will select two products and eight sections and click next. Now we are going to assign each of the ECU serial numbers to our manifolds. You can give this manifold a name, 
but just know that they will appear on the screen in alphanumeric order. We will then select how many sensors are on this ECU. We have eight runs on each manifold with a sensor on every run. Also in this case, we have a dual shoot system. So for the seed runs, we'll keep this on product A, but for the fertilizer runs, we'll make sure they are using product B. Tap next and repeat this process for each manifold and ECU on your machine. It is easiest to install the ECUs in numerical order from left to right and front to back on the machine to make sure this part goes faster, but it's not necessary. Just make sure you assign the right serial number to the proper manifold and you'll be just fine. The next step is to assign each port to a run on the manifold. If you installed all sensors starting with port 1, you should not need to make changes here, but if you have a slightly different setup, you can change it any ECU as you see fit. If you need to disable individual runs on a manifold, tap the green button to turn them off. If you ever need to disable the manifold entirely, flip off the enable switch. If you need to change what port the auditory tube is plugged into, just press and hold the run number, then drag it into the appropriate port. And don't worry, if you ever mess up, you can hit the reset button at the top. Click apply once done and make changes to the other sections as necessary. Tap next to proceed. Now tap yourself on the back because the hard work is over. Just a few last things. First, it will ask you if you're operating with section control, meaning your drill is capable of turning off the product flow to individual sections. We need to know this so we can properly alert you to actual flow problems. Next, you will select which ECU has the work switch connected to it. If you're unsure, check the ECU wire harness connectors. The one with the four wires, not two, is the one that has the work switch. In this case, it is this one. Next, we will select if the machine is currently raised or lowered, so we know how to read the work switch and click Next. Now, we can set the amount of time the system will wait after it detects a blockage until it sounds an alarm. You can adjust this setting later as well. You can also adjust the alarm volume. Each time you adjust it, you will hear a short sample of how loud it will be. You can also switch on background notifications if you will ever have the app running in the background. With this feature on, we will attempt to notify you if you do not have the app on the main screen. Be sure to click Always Allow in the pop-up that appears to ensure you'll be alerted anytime a problem is detected. It's always best to leave the app open and running at all times of operation. Last but not least is to set up the product threshold parameters in the Mass Flow tab under Settings. Mass flow measures the product flow throughout the entire system. You'll want to set mass flow alarms to alert you when mass flow numbers are outside of your typical flow thresholds. If your thresholds are too wide, you may not be getting the proper notifications of a blockage. After using the app for a while, you'll know what is normal for your system and be able to set your thresholds based on that. You've now successfully configured the app to work with your system. If you ever have any questions about setting up your Recon Blockage Plus system from Ready, give us a call at 701-205-1485. And remember, Ready wants to keep you in the field for your most important pass of the year.